Hello, and welcome to Writer's Group Therapy. I'm Tom. And I'm Roshni. We're writers helping writers with whatever writing ailments you might have. Whether it's related to your craft or your career, we can help. Are you ready for your session? The The doctors doctors are are in. in. Doing good, Tom. What's up? Uh, I brought some friends on the podcast today uh, to talk about uh, a uh, group that they uh, they run, uh, Matt Boda and Sylvie, uh, a husband and wife team that founded and co-founded Get It Made X, which is a, as they call it, a production-based screenplay platform. And just to be like full disclosure, I was a member of Get It Made X in early 2021 And it was really great, but I was super busy and I was moving, so I left it. But I am back in it now, so I I have a little bias in this. But it's a really interesting program, so I wanted to have them on the show to talk about it. Hey, Matt, Sylvie, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you. We're so excited to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. So just, you know, this is going to be weird. Uh, Roshni and I co-lead a writer's group, and that's the closest thing I can say that Get It Made X is to anything I've ever been in before. But it is not just a writer's group. It is so much more than that. Can you talk about it? Because it's it's like part writer's group, part mentorship, part production, part management. It's it's so many things. So why don't you give us a little quick overview of what Get It Made X is? Sure. Um, Get It Made X, we like to think of ourselves as like a first of its kind membership program um, to a production company and a marketing agency for screenwriters. So when you say that, you know, it's a lot of things, it's not just a writer's group. It's because we are helping screenwriters end to end from concept inception all the way through production. So when people say script to screen, we help a writer every step of the way. Yeah. I really think that, uh, one of the main things we do is, we help make uh, a space and we're the bridge for writers that are outside of the studio system uh, so they can actually have like a real shot at getting their voice heard aside from the normal routes that they have, which are, you know, screenplay contests and, uh, you know, schools or uh, things like that. So we purposefully made it like a 360 all inclusive kind of, um, program platform uh, for the sole purpose of finding those, you know, diamonds in the rough, developing them and then getting them to, you know, actual executive producers and studios and places for uh, them to be seriously considered. So you're more of an incubator program and not a production company, or are you also a production company? So um, we are a production company first and foremost. Uh, We've had a professional production company for the last nine years making music videos and commercials and lifestyle videos and brand content. And since we own all the cameras and the computers and we have facilities and we have contacts and infrastructure, uh, we really wanted to play that long form game, like getting a full movie or a full TV show picked up. And since we were already built for making you know, short form content, like I said, music videos and commercials and things like that. Uh, we started this incubating program and I, I really sort of uh, made this hybrid between um, um, anonymous content has something called Film Lab, but it's only for their professionals inside their roster. And they make proof of concepts to show Netflix you know, what they would do to win a $100 million contract or something. And then Legion M which is actually a platform that fans can invest in films, but they have bankable assets. Like Kevin Smith is part of Legion M. And then that attracts all these fans to do micro investments. And then they can take that money, make their own film, be in full control and then sell it to have uh, reap all the rewards. So I sort of put those two things together, making this incubator inside of a production company that has been exist in existence for quite some time. So you're kind of like the inverted original studio system. Like, remember back in like the golden age of Hollywood, how they would develop like their writers or develop their directors or their actors. So you're kind of doing that. But it sounds like you're kind of crowdfunding instead of like getting studio backing to make the films. Am I I reading that correctly or? I mean, to a certain degree, crowdfunding isn't the isn't the right word because 
uh, crowdfunding is like you reach out to a bunch of your supporters as an artist or something. With us, we uh, model ourselves um, off of the labor unions in Hollywood. So IATSE, DGA, WGA, they all collect dues from their membership. And that's what we do. And we use that membership in addition to our surplus from our company to create these opportunities. So uh, our members pay dues and we then use those dues to give them benefits, help them develop. Uh, That money goes to attracting um, uh, industry professionals to come in and teach. And then we also use that money to subsidize the cost of film production. Yeah, I got to say, these guys are so busy. Um, my calendar is already filled up with uh, table reads and workshops and, and uh, whatever. We have contests and log lines. So you guys use all that to run all these various programs for the writers. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify one thing. So Absurd Hero Production, which is what Matt's been referring to, is the production company, which is the parent company of Get It Made. And Get It Made is the development platform for screenplays. So I would say because there's this overlap between the production company and the development, we are able to provide member services and benefits that sort of overlap from pre-production to post-production. So I think the question is about, you know, what what do we actually do and, and how do screenwriters benefit from this program? They benefit from developing what's on the page and in the writing, as well as getting production experience from industry professionals and filmmakers all along the way. Oh, wow. OK. So then how do you vet the people who are in your program? So we have a pretty intense vetting process. Um what we can't do, so we, we have a lot of contacts um, in terms of executive producers, and we have a sales agent on staff who, you know, sold movies for Cinestar, which is Zoe Saldana's company, and Entertainment One. So what we can't do is go and just peddle a bunch of unvetted work. Um, so we do a 30-day uh, trial process, which uh, before you can even uh, do the trial process, you have to submit your material and then it goes under review. And then if we feel like that the story can be reverse engineered into a good proof of concept, uh, that we sort of have this proprietary approach to, to developing, then we invite that person to come in for a 30 day trial process for, for two things for us to, to, to see how their work ethic is and their uh, expectations and all sorts of other stuff. And then also mm-hmm. for them to see how we do uh, what we do, because it's got to be, you know, uh, a pretty tight, uh, you know, marriage between us and our writers. So uh, we can't serve everyone, but we can serve those who have a great story and a great, um, you know, sense of purpose and really just love the spirit of screenwriting. But number one, they, they do have to have a good story. Well, what kind of writers can benefit from your program? I mean, what level do they need to be at? Do you have a a minimum or a a set requirements? Yeah. So, I mean, one thing that, uh, so we can help a lot of people. We have various tiers. So if someone comes in at a beginner's level, then we really put them into a lot of different development that we have, and they don't really become eligible for production uh, and things like that. But Really, a writer, uh, when they know that uh, a writer is ready to come to get it made when they've, uh, you know, had some success in the screenplay contest world, uh, we like to say, you know, if you can get a seven or an eight on the blacklist with your TV pilot script or your feature film, then you're really set up and ready to go for get it made. Um, But if people come in with, um, you know, scripts that, you know, were rated on, cover fly or, you know, all these other contests and have good coverage, then we can help them, you know, work from that point to get it up, you know, to that higher level, higher level. But what we are doing is we're competing with WGA writers, writers that have a history of filmmaking, uh, that have agents. And, you know, so we really have to go that extra mile and we have to have great work. So the writers that we uh, really, you know, love to work with the most. We love all writers, but the writers that we really love to work with the most are the ones who have a vetted 
you know, pilot script or feature film script. Cool. What are some, you know, can you tell me about some of the projects that you've made already and how they've done and, and how that process went for getting those uh, produced? Yeah, I feel like I'm hogging all the space here, but um, <laughs> that's sort of my my realm is the production side of it. But uh, so I was a member of IATSE, um, the 728 for almost 10 years. And uh, so what that did is I worked on all the biggest movies and TV shows in Hollywood. And I met really, really big filmmakers and learned a lot from those filmmakers. So I go to those filmmakers to come in and develop our work and to produce our work and to act in our work. Uh, so, you know, for instance, we just did a, a movie called Disaster Man, uh, which has Henry Zabrowski, who actually is the star and founder of uh, one of the biggest podcasts in the world. It's called Last Podcast on the Left. Uh, but he's also had a lot of success as an actor. He was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's best friend in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. He was in Heroes and he's just done a bunch of stuff, but he's also got this giant social media following. So I reached out to Henry's agent. We made a deal. Henry came in to uh, produce and uh, star in our proof of concept Disaster Man, which is like a half hour crime comedy drama. And uh, then opposite him, we have a really big social media star who has over 4 million followers across uh, you know, all of his platforms, TikTok and Instagram. And uh, he's been an actor as well. So we put these guys together with this built-in audience and you know that looks really good for our pitch deck um you know so that's one example um for instance another one after lifetime that stars stephen williams who's been in like over 150 you know uh amazing shows he was mr x in the x files um mm -hmm. yeah he was cool yeah you know he was quentin in lena waits the shy uh you know so he came in and he starred in one of our proof of concepts but that same proof of concept also stars uh, a part of brielle who is, you know, doing really big things right now. She has a, a show called Boo Bitch on Netflix right now, but she was the star of AP Bio. She's in all the Kevin Smith reboots. Um, and then it also has Max Lloyd-Jones, who played Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian. You know, and the way that we're able to do that is because of my background as a professional filmmaker in IATSE. So um, that is the secret ingredient to what we do here is it's sort of helmed by a seasoned filmmaker. And, um, and without that, um, organizations are, um, you know, sort of left being ran by cinephiles. If, if I can, you know, say it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> so I see, I get to what you're saying there. Yeah. So that's kind of the goal and the end project product there. So let's back up to, to kind of like the beginning then. So what's a writer coming in to get it made X? What can they expect to go through? What are some of the steps and the activities that they're going to go through to try to develop their their process and their logline and their POC and that kind of thing? Sure, I'll take that one. Um, so Get It Made X members have, you know, various resources and services that we sort of um, provide created in this infrastructure and platform. We have an exclusive app that everything is, is housed in. So everything is um, communicated that way. And every month we have this proprietary loop that we've created. Um, one of the loops is peer reviews. So every month we peer up pair up uh, members with another member and they do a script exchange for sort of the man on the street, uh, as Matt would call it, feedback. We also have monthly, uh, we use Film Freeway as a platform. We have monthly producers review where our in-house producers review the proof of concept scripts and provide scores and standards and really give the writers uh, the ability to see what areas they need to work on, whether it's, you know, dialogue or character, uh, intrigue, concept satisfaction. There's all these sort of check marks and that the producer's review provides. So from a development standpoint, those are two loops. And then the third loop is what we call group coaching. And we pair up writers with industry professionals that work with them on their elevator pitch, their synopsis and character breakdown, as well as these six pages. So that's just like the basic 
um, sort of core uh, of the membership. But as you kind of mentioned earlier, Tom, there's always events and workshops and all these additional things that uh, we provide as like writing exercises, um, creativity boosts, you know, things to help build community. I think one of the things that we're really strong um, and proud of is this community of writers that we've built. Everyone is really supportive of each other. Um, the app gives everybody the ability to um, message and direct message with industry professionals that we have on our roster. And, you know, we're constantly, one of the questions people ask is like, who do you have on your roster? We constantly have industry pros coming in all the time because uh, we're still growing and building. And so we have resident industry pros who have been with us a long time. And then we also have new ones coming in all the time, depending on um, how much uh, work they have going on. Cause they're industry pros. So they're, they're probably working on a TV show or, um, or a film and on their breaks they're they're able to give us some time and some commitment to the writers and help them. Yeah. And so uh, well, just to jump in there real quick, some of our uh, industry pros are, are, you know, pretty awesome. Like we have uh, one of our resident industry professionals is this guy named Danny Rose, who is the executive producer and most known for creating Scrubs, Cougar Town, Scorpion, you know, just a long list of shows that ran over 100 episodes and Emmy award winning and Giovanni Lampassi, who is, you know, the filmmaker behind 119 episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Veronica Mars. And he's also directed a whole bunch of those shows. And Kimmy Weber, who is Zack Snyder's script supervisor, you know, we, we are really able to like get the real deal to come in and pay one-on-one -on -one attention to our writers. It's not all like a one-off where you like submit something and then you get written word back uh, from someone you don't know who wrote it, and then you're left sort of uh, on your own to interpret what they mean. And then when you do a rewrite, you sort of put it in blindly again. Um, our writers work one on one with you know these various professionals and get feedback, and then give them give that same person their work back, their rewrite back, and then get more feedback back and back and back. And that's how the work actually gets better because they're not stuck in this endless feedback loop. They're actually getting better you know, and getting a sounding board from the same source. Uh, so we're really proud about that aspect as well. well. That's awesome. And can I just say, thank you for defi for defining POC, because whenever Tom says POC, I'm like, person of color? He's like, oh, no, proof of concept. <laughs> so thank you for saying that. Just wanted to say, because, yes, anyway. But I would be curious, and you can be vague on the details if you are still like in the negotiating phases of things. But what would be like your biggest success story coming out of Get It Made? And what would be like a cautionary tale that you've seen from some of your writers? Yeah, I love that question. That's a great. I'll first start with the cautionary tale. Uh, when we first started, we were greenlighting concepts because we can't just read, a, you know, a hundred full length scripts from all of our writers. We were working in these small bites so we had greenlit three movies that had great concepts, but the full length material either wasn't written or wasn't ready. And what that did was stall the entire stall the entire process because we had nothing actually to sell. So, for instance, we have a, a proof of concept called Haunts, and when we showed that, we had uh, the um, we had uh, uh, people from Circle of Confusion. And they came out to the, the movie theater because we we show our mo movies at the movie theater once a year, and we invite industry professionals and ex you know producers and buyers to come out and watch what we have. And we got a, a request for haunts from Circle of Confusion, and we had nothing to give them. And it was a very sad moment because Circle of Confusion did The Walking Dead and you know a, a, a whole slew of other films, and it was. A wake up call for us that we cannot green light films that don't have the full length written material. Um, the great thing is that they were interested, you know, so uh, we knew that the concept work, uh, works. And um, essentially, um, you know, what that does is it opens them up to being interested in other genres and it really opens it opens up them to look at our written slate. Uh, you know, past our uh, production slate, which opens up the possibilities and opportunities for all the writers who don't have a proof of concept. So that was still 
uh, a win in our in our eyes. But not having the full length material is the biggest cautionary tale that we have. We, you know, don't want to green light things that don't have a vetted, you know, a vetted script because that's actually what's for sale. Um, so, and I think that the probably the biggest um, um, uh, success story that we have is After Lifetime. It's currently being reviewed at Amazon. And uh, the way that we did that is, you know, we ride the coattails. Max was a good friend of mine. And um, Max, you know, after we got the whole, the whole pitch package done and the proof of concept and all these bankable assets and made a great pitch deck, Max went to an executive producer on a movie he was doing and told them about a project that he had created. And that's how it works. That's how we really get inside is by, you know, you know, uh, ducking into the castle walls behind, you know, the people that are already invited into the club. Uh, so after lifetime, you know, it has the, the, first of all, it has the most bankable assets, the three big actors that are in the show. Uh, but secondly, it's, at, it's currently being considered at Amazon right now. So, um, the process definitely works and we're on our way to AFM this year. So, um, you know, we are, using our production slate to open up the uh the world of the rest of our scripts to you know to the written slate open up the our world to the buyers for our written slate for consideration um which was a happy accident actually we were mainly thinking that they were only going to consider movies that were produced but now um we have you know all these these assets that still make the script, um, you know, plausible because what's for sale at the end, even if you do have a proof of concept film, the script is what they buy. So, uh, we're really happy that the amazing work that we've done in production has now opened up opportunities for a written slate, which is, uh, what studios and, uh, you know, production companies like ours normally have. They normally just have written work that's for sale. So we're happy about that. Well, yeah, with, the way production is going with all the streaming networks, there's so much production going on. I think that they're going faster than the writers can turn it out in some cases. So unlike AFMs of past where, yeah, it was mostly people selling their, their finished movies. Nowadays, those companies are looking for more content to produce. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a, I wanted to just jump in and talk about the streamers and what they're looking for. Cause when we talk about proof of concept and the reason we focus on proof of concept is because it's a much lower risk from a production standpoint for our company, as well as the screenwriter that's involved, the collaborators that's involved, as well as the studios. Cause when, at the end of the day, they buy the screenplay because of the proof of concept. And now they're going to shoot the entire pilot or the feature on their own. We don't have to shoot a feature and try to sell that feature. We don't have to shoot a full pilot episode and try to sell that pilot episode. So it's a much more manageable and scalable opportunity for everyone involved. Yeah, it's uh, taking on the risk of full length production, which we used to do, sinking in like 250 grand into an indie movie that just gets buried amongst the sea of all the other indies and you're scrounging just to get that 250 back for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? So we can pass, we can pass the risk of production off to the bigger studios who are more equipped to handle that risk. You know, so one giant movie from Warner brothers pays for a hundred small movies. So, uh, but if we made one movie and it doesn't work, then we're, we're done. But we can make 50 proof of concept films for the cost of one indie movie and do it again next year with no, you know, uh, no possibility of going belly up, as they say. That sounds really cool. I hope that's really successful. Um, what are your plans in the near term and like long term for Get It Made and Absurd Hero Productions? Yeah, well, we're constantly um, developing and, and, and evolving the program and platform. Um, I'm head of development in terms of the writers and the membership benefits. So I'm talking to the writers all the time about resources and support that they need to make sure that we have the bandwidth and, and the uh, expertise to provide it. And the vision for us really is to help screenwriters 
have a strategic plan for their own personal journey. Um, what, how we're different than from other organization is that we have this one-on-one -on -one personal uh, relationship with the writers. We understand what their concepts are. We know where they're at in their lives and we can help them wherever they're at and at the pace that they need to be at. Um, we're really developing writers to understand what strategy means in this business because without a strategy, they are, you know, for the most part, I think for the past 20 years in the screenplay competition world, um, screenwriters have been just um, putting their eggs in multiple basket and hoping somebody will find them or discover them um, and hoping that they're going to win this like golden lottery ticket so that their feature pilot gets made. Um, and that's not enough. I think you have to have a strategy, develop where you are in terms of your writing, and then find the collaborators and the industry professionals to be part of that project and champion that project um, in order to sell it. Because it's not a single person win, it's actually a team that moves um, screenplays into the studios and, and executives. Yeah, and I'd say- a good, good spot, yeah. It's a, team, it's a team sport. It's a team sport. It's not, you know, we always think of writing as a very solitary thing, or maybe you have a partner, but movies and film production are really team events. It takes a village. I could, you know, um, you know, we, if you look in the credits at the end of any TV show or, or movie, I mean, there's 300 people involved, you know, it's, it's not like a, a rock star. Or that, you know, one guy does it all or something like in movies, music is just one portion of the whole process. It, it takes so many people. So it definitely is that team effort. Um, in terms of the future, you know, we're really concentrating now since we came across the, you know, and this was, it's again, it's all happy accidents as we, you know, really our mission is to help screenwriters that are outside of the studio system. So as we work towards that mission, you know, happy accidents start to appear. For instance, having a sales agent on staff, that never really even occurred to us until Cicely Saldana from Cinestar, you know, I was talking to her and she introduced me to Diego. And then we started talking and, and it was just like, you know, a match made in heaven. And then, you know, we, we use our surplus and, you know, our membership dues to, you know, um, to, uh, to purchase things and to put people on retainers that can actually help. So if we're trying to sell material, one of the best things that we can possibly have on our staff is, is a sales agent or more. So, you know, in the future, we're looking to get more sales agents. We're also looking for partnerships. Uh, the blacklist is a great example of, you know, they're just working with everybody. So we'd really love to, to get some more partnerships. But at the same time, we're also a startup technology company. So we've um, actually uh, organized ourselves to go out for angel investment because one of our writers could write the next big blockbuster. They could write the next, you know, TV show that runs for eight seasons. Uh, we don't know. And, um, you know, that that is a huge area to mine for, you know, new content. And um, it's really an exciting place to be um on the you know the front lines of digging up that new content because we are working with the 99 percent hollywood is working with the one percent so we have such a you know a such a greater chance of finding that diamond in the rough than hollywood does because we have so so many more people to work with um, so you know we're super excited to just keep helping more screenwriters keep creating more packages growing our catalog. So when we meet buyers and start to create these relationships, they look in our catalog and they don't need to look anywhere else because we've got something for everyone. We've got movies across all genres and, you know, all, with all different details and, you know, we, and we have a giant catalog. So that's what we're really excited about. It's very cool. So if people want to know more than they've learned here, uh, where can they find you guys online? Um, it's really easy. It's getitmade.la and the name sort of 
it has become more and more uh, relevant and uh, on on point with everything that we do. So, you know, the reason this was all started, and we didn't really talk about our personal stories and, and the story of Get It Made, but, you know, Matt is a filmmaker and he just wants to make movies. So at the end of the day, he's like, how can we make more movies um, for as many people as possible? And, and I think this is the way we're going to be able to do that. Yeah, so just you can just Google Get it made g-e-t-i-t-m-a-d-e get it made la and we're like the only thing that pops up so if you're looking to get it made just google get it made and you'll be on our doorstep that's so awesome thank you guys for spending some time with us and letting us know where to find you and check it out guys get it made dot la who knew you could have a dot la extension and we will see you guys soon